part of the slide is um, us asking each other uh, five questions. Okay. Uh, and you know, when we are uh, going through the questions, I'm going to start preparing this uh, tart or else, you know, by 11 o'clock when we close, the thing is not ready. Yes. <laughs> okay, my question one for you is, what have you been busy with at work uh, lately? E, uh, say, you know, with the circuit breaker and now the post circuit breaker. Oh, this is, yeah, the circuit breakers uh, is interesting because uh, in the very beginning, it's about the, the food, whether the food can arrive to Singapore. Remember, uh, our PM Lee called uh, uh, the Malaysia Prime Minister Muhyiddin, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, to open up the the you know the channel for the food to come in. I think that's a very important move because without that, I think the food price will spike really, really greatly. Because yeah, because initially everybody thought, hey, you know, without the we. Because Singapore actually ranked the highest, no, in terms of, um, uh, in terms of food security in the world. Wow! You know, Singapore can source uh, across the world, and then yeah, <laughs> that's an interesting thing. Singapore doesn't really produce, but rank the highest in food security. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then when the 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 crisis hit, they they didn't expect. I mean, most of the flight actually stopped. And then you know the uh, the food actually cannot come in on time, and then the price of the freight increased like five times. So we were like you know caught in a situation that we have to arrange for sea shipments, for land transport, you know. So all these things uh, come in, and then then the other crazier thing is uh, you know I mean the time that when people can't get the toilet paper and the eggs, you know what happened, right? I mean uh, People will will just have to go go online to find, and then then they can't they couldn't get into Lazada, they couldn't get into Amazon. <laughs> then they turn into our website to buy eggs, to buy veggie, and suddenly we the whole things jam up. You know, all the orders came in, and then wow, it's crazy. You know, it's like that one day, you know, hundreds more than one hundred orders come in. And then call in, hey, I want veggie, I want whatever, I'm scared to go out, can you please deliver and all this. So we have to keep apologizing to people, hey, we have to we have to do something, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, really crack my mind how to, you know, how to make delivery faster and how to how to print the labels uh, of the address and then you know how to do all these things. So overnight, you know, we have to, yeah. Do, do a lot of changes. Yeah. It's a sharp learning curve for a lot of people. And suddenly your staff have to change it and start uh, doing uh, pants. Even myself, you know, then I start wearing short pants, go to the shoes, going to the, going to the, you know, the, the front to, you know, pick up the goods and then, yeah, deliver, 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 and then call a friend say, then, you know, those, uh, um, luckily my friends, uh, that, uh, you know, the taxi drivers, they, they, you know, they're also scared to take people and then also because everybody stay at home, right? And just nice, you know, they help to deliver. Yeah. Which is very nice, you know. Yeah. So, so really, you're providing jobs uh, during the tough times to... Well, we help each other, I think, yeah. Yeah. We deliver by ourselves, but, you know, it's it's just too much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's very, very interesting. Then suddenly a lot of uh, people want to show... Uh, love to their uh, colleagues, clients. Then they found us, and then they they got us to deliver. You know, uh, they because our our budget is not high. Also, you know, even thirty dollars, we deliver a box to to the you know for the mainly for the I think the insurance companies. Yeah, some of the they send to their clients. So we do a lot of this recently. You know, they 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 want our produce, and then they. Yeah, I mean, uh, so we do. Luckily, we we still stay in job. Right? At least we have some business going. <laughs> yeah, it's been tough. And then the colleagues from Malaysia, they cannot go back, and then they have to, you know. But luckily, government is nice and let let them to stay in the office. Okay, let me see. Mm. 
Okay, now this is uh, related to my fourth question for you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about this park, uh, this organic park that you own? Is, you hold out, outdoor concerts as well, is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you see, the, I'm also the type that never get, <laughs> never sit still, I think. <laughs> yeah. So this, this organic park is, we, we open it because initially we, we do this, uh, uh, you know, when we do this organic farm, so before I, I bring Zensi into Singapore, I actually, my project is this, uh, opening this park for the public. So, um, uh, we, you know, we did a lot because we initially we opened restaurants, uh, uh, a market that sell the produce we grow mm -hmm. with the tour. So with bicycle that people can cycle, they can harvest. So a lot, uh, so, to you know to to bring people to learn about organic and things like that so over here over the years it grows and then it it changed it changed with our concept it changed according to our understanding about organic and by the time of the 10 years we started that we actually have brought in more than five hundred thousand singaporeans to visit the farms for 10 years so it's a half a million we didn't know that, you know, so it's, and then at the same time, we actually brought a lot of people to Guam, which is my hometown, you know, to oh. share everything about, you know, the small town, the food, the cultures and things like that. Uh, so, so over the time it evolved and then uh, now the farm has a, a something called Happy Farm. Mm -hmm. that we grow many different things inside, you know, uh, uh, 50 other types of herbs. So uh, we even have something like saw, saw tooth, coriander. You probably never know, but it's like a poor man co coriander that you know when you don't have money to buy old time. You know you can't really see the coriander. You can't get a coriander seeds. So you have this saw 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 tooth coriander. So it's like a saw you know chain saw saw tooth coriander. You can check it out. It's the same taste as the coriander. Yeah. So we do all these special things, yeah. Mm. Inside, you know. I uh, see you can you have your own bee um you have your own honey, you harvest your own honey, is it? Yeah, we don't even put the uh, you know someone work with us and then you can you can come for the bee workshops, you know, learn how to take out the beehives, you know, learn how to steal something from the bees. <laughs> <laughs> You try that. You wear a bee suit and then you harvest your own honey. Yeah, you have to use a smoke to chase them away, and then you have to. Wow. Yeah, you know, yeah that that was what I do. What I did when I was young, also you know, for my uncle, you know, to to do this whenever they, she harvested the honey, uh, from the star fruit farm. They actually the honey tastes star fruit. If you know that, if you understand, honey is like if it's inside the manuka forest, it will taste manuka. If it's inside the star fruit farm, it will taste star fruit. So the honey is sour, not sweet. Oh wow! So this is a very special, special part, you know. Like not most of people know, hey, honey will taste the same. No, honey tastes very different. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever if you are in different places, it tastes very different, and it, it looks very different. Yeah. So so this is like yeah. You talk about food, days cannot finish. Really, full tail is that thing. It suits your team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and because it's a, a late show, you know, I I, I, I don't want it to uh, be too intensive in terms of, you know, learning how to cook because uh, it's already so late, you know. <laughs> so yeah. We're just, you know, yeah. uh, learning from each other and at the same time, you know, a little bit about telling people how to, you know, make some of these uh, uh healthier recipes. So the crazy thing I did uh, recently was um, I told the team, hey, you know, let's do something special, you know. So we, we now allow the pre book tour to uh, uh, to book the growing banana tree with us. So learn how to grow the tree in you know, the banana oh. tree. And so, is it, how, how do you mean? It means you, you replant, is it 
Yeah, you re- re- transplant because you know the banana uh banana tree and they actually grow a lot of shoots beside them. Mm-hmm. And the banana is only one time, you know, when you grow the banana is only you, know, you only harvest one time. Mm. But then the shoot will start popping out beside them, then you have to transplant. So we can show how to transplant and then move them into a new place and grow with us. So we may experiment to see whether we can bring into Singapore and then come out something called, you know, we, we, we launched something called Organic to Explore, meaning that we want, if we, we make a box, that the box come with a, a different theme. The recent theme is uh, Amaranth that grow. Uh, you can learn how to grow amaran at home. You know the the bayam, you know, cian cai, yeah, at home. And how do you usually plant the grains and eat the grains? Uh, is it the same thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but we we make it a box for the kids and the parents to do together. So we put the pots in. We put the 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 you know the pit moles in the the, the soil, the fertilizers. So mm-hmm. you can at home, and then at the same time you learn about the culture things. So this this month we are we are you know putting in the box uh, about Johor, you know, learn about Johor, learn about Johor food, how to make Johor food, how to what what's Johor and learn about the culture. So suit the circuit breakers uh, that's that that's a that's a thing that we do because we know that less and less people can travel to the farm now because of the COVID nineteen. So we have to change. Yeah. So you know so that's related yeah. to my last uh, question for you because everybody wants to start growing something in their house and what are some of the easy organic produce which people can start growing from home? So you just mentioned that amaranth vegetable is easy to grow at home, right? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, that's one of the easiest uh, things because amaranth is actually also similar to a type of wheat that can grow pretty fast. And then you don't even need to do siblings. Uh, the problem can be the the white spots, the fungus that grow on the amaran. But normally, when you grow in a small plot, it won't spread so fast. So amaran can be one good one to grow. Uh, normally, people will grow like Thai sim or Xiao Bai Thai, but sometimes it's a bit tough to grow that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So amaran, I can recommend you to grow or. Kangkong is quite easy also. Or a lot of them they grow, they like to grow sprouts. Yeah, which yeah, is easier. Sprouts really, yeah. Kangkong, I think it's so easy, right? Like it's Yeah, easy. pretty easy, pretty easy. Oh yeah, just just long only, yeah. Mm. I can try that. Kangkong is it can be easy as well. Yeah. So yeah, I mean uh Singapore, yeah, you have to grow in normally you have to get a form box, you know, then you and to get a saw, you have to buy some pipos to grow them. Then you make sure that you know the vent, the ventilation is good, and then you make sure that you know the water don't really stuck in the in the in the box. So you have to make holes. Put some of the gut, the easy way of doing the gardening at home. You you should you can check it out easily on you know, YouTube. Yeah, but yeah, could, could be nice. I I I I have no green hands, you know, and. And you know, initially when I wanted to buy plants for the house, I just wanted to buy pineapples because you know, like this one on my right side, so I can decorate my house and it's green. I can cut open and eat it. And I think by now people will discover that my favorite fruit is pineapple. I eat a lot of pineapple. There's something about pineapple is because you know I just had this surgery, right? And if you go and uh, search up, there is some study saying that. Uh, bromelain, which is the enzyme found in pineapples, uh, does help to speed up uh, wound healing. So, that's one of the things. Okay. Right. I say, I, I, since I love pineapples, I, you know, don't mind uh, uh, trying. Really? Okay. Never know about that. Never know about the wound healing things of pineapples. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the foods we eat, they have more function than sometimes, you know, just Making us full, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I have one question for you also. The um so when the uh customers, I mean your your patients ask you, is you know, eating organic food will really help you because to most of the doctors, I don't know, 
if someone is watching or not. Yeah, they always say, oh, just carry on eating normal things. You're fine. But, you know, I, a lot of times I kind of disagree. Mm. You, know, think you really, eat, when you eat well, it will be better for you. That's for sure. Because uh, throughout the, the journeys of this organic food, uh, we have seen in all our shops, you know, we have 15 shops now, that 14 in Malaysia and one over here in Singapore. We meet a lot of the patients who are desperate to to be people. Sometimes it's actually quite sad, you know, some of them, hey, why suddenly some of them don't come? Oh, yeah, he passed away. <laughs> Sometimes it's quite sad, nah, yeah. <laughs> but a lot of them are desperate to be cute, you know. So a lot of them, they say, oh, doctor say, oh, I left only three months. A lot of them, I have one auntie, very nice auntie, very cute auntie, yeah. He lived another eight years. Wow. He yeah. has only three months. Yeah. Week in, week out, I see her and then, and uh, yeah, always tall and then, yeah, now I'm a friend of the, the daughter and also the father also. So it's, Sometimes it's a good story about this. So what's your what's your take about this? Yeah, that does organic food really help or you well, okay. yeah. you have asked me a really uh difficult question because yeah, yeah because the the answer is we we don't know. <laughs> um or I don't know, uh or uh that you know the the world worldwide health promotion boards and the world health organizations we don't know yeah. um but I would like to think organic food as this is it's the most natural way to grow food for us and so it must be better than it 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 must be better for our environment when you grow organically so that I believe you know I think if anybody can. Uh, get access to and can afford should go for organic foods. And that is the same uh, advice that I give to my patients. Must I eat organic food? I say, if it's accessible to you and you can afford, because sometimes it can be a little bit more expensive, please go ahead and do so. And that's why, you know, I, I really enjoy listening to you because uh, when organic foods first started in Singapore, it's very expensive. It's not possible for people to afford, and it's inaccessible, meaning that you can't cook everything organic. But now you have brought in some sin wheat. I find it easy to eat organic, and the vegetables can be found in so many, you know, local supermarkets. How many local supermarkets are you in? Yeah, we are in uh, uh, Cold Storage, mm -hmm. Giant. You can buy it uh, from our website. Mm -hmm. You can also buy from uh, uh, Fair Price, uh, Finest, uh, under a Good Nature brand. Mm -hmm. You can also find us in the Lazada and also uh, Amazon. So you are just like two hours away from organic food, you know, easily. Yeah. yeah but even those food that uh, vegetables that we import from the from the wholesalers, uh, the certified organic wholesalers, we actually know who are the farmers. And I some mm -hmm. most of them are specific. I want that farmers uh, broccoli because it tastes just better. Yeah. And then, uh, so, the, you know, we, I, I see myself as a curator of the food. You know, mm -hmm. I, I really choose the food that I bring in. You know, so, for example, you know, some, some interesting thing that I always share is the beetroot that we sell. Yeah. We can easily grow beetroot in our Malaysia farms. But I tell my farmers don't grow that. Because when you grow the beetroot in Malaysia, it always tastes very earthy. That's why the supermarket sell those beetroot from Malaysia, it never sell, it will, it will just stuck there forever. Even though it's cheap, but then they don't sell because it tastes so earthy and nobody wants to eat. Mm. So I insist, even though from Australia, it costs more to bring in, it's more expensive, but you know that the whole world, only Australian put the beetroot in their burger. <laughs> No, so, better yeah, you just go with the best one and then you you just eat it that there's no earthy taste because of the because of the temperature difference and also the soil. 
So that's the thing, you know. It 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 gives us the, the 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 special taste. So that's why you know we insist to do that. Oh, your food is done. Okay. Yeah. Um. I mean. Um. I I think I want to go back to that point. I think you're right because. You know what? You are the curator of a lot of the uh, organic foods that we get in Singapore. And um, there must be a lot of thought process as to why this is from this country and not from that country and why you would grow this in uh, Malaysia or Thailand but not in other places, you know? And so um, there's a lot of knowledge in that. And, uh, and so I'm very happy to have you here because a lot of us don't know. We just assume that there's in the supermarket we just buy, but there's a lot of thought process and planning uh, behind why we see our food on the shelves. Uh, and so I, I, I find it really interesting. I know, you know, we can sit here and talk all night about, <laughs> about food. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so, yes, so I prepared uh, 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 three versions of uh, this uh, tart. Um, uh, just now I mentioned to everybody that this tart you can find in Okinawa. It's like a, in, in the touristy shop you can find this. But this is my own version of it. It's dairy-free. The tart case is uh, made of a combination of almond uh, that I've ground, uh, like an almond meal. Um, and um, I use uh, olive oil as well as uh, egg yolk and a little bit of sugar to, to, to mold it out. It is not, it's not hard to make and it is not uh, so sensitive. So my children can also contribute in in making it. And uh, the traditional method is just using only purple sweet potato where you pipe it in boat. Um, but I've decided, you know, to do a bit of hydrangeas uh, today. So I'm not too sure whether you can see it in the camera or not, but this is just yeah, yeah. yellow, yellow uh, uh, potato. This is with the uh, purple potato. And this is the mix. I actually think that, you know, I, I'm not too sure about anybody, everybody else, but I think this looks more like hydrangea, and I prefer this version where it is a, a you, you you use one side of your uh, piping bag with a purple sweet potato and the other side with yellow sweet potato, and then you pipe it. And then, of course, after this is done, you need to bake it for about eight minutes, and, and that's it. So although I took my time to make it, it's actually really easy. I made the tart shells before, uh, and I used these uh, tin um, that is uh, for us to make, you know, egg tart. It's the same thing. Um, and uh, you could buy both shape as well and pipe, pipe it differently, but I'm piping it like that today. And um, it, it's just healthy, you know. Uh, you don't have to add a lot of sugar mm -hmm. flavoring because uh, the purple sweet potato itself is already very delicious. Yeah, very, very good. I, I like my uh, Thai farmers uh, organic purple sweet potato. Very, very good. Yes, it's very, very, very sweet. Yeah. Oh, it tastes like perfume. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah.